know, I'm trying to demolish them in any way we can. It was fun, though, man, looking back on it. And, um, you know, both universities are doing great right now. They're doing a lot of great things. And we're back with another episode of the... That podcast. We got another interesting guest, <laughs> everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and let my man Marvin introduce him. Go ahead. And I got man. another. I got another fellow door boy, Mr. Detroit, Mr. PSL, Mr. Basketball, McDonald's All American, oh, one of the baddest motherfuckers to put shoes on and put the <laughs> ball in the bucket. You hear me, Keith Apple? <laughs> hey, What's man. the deal, man? Thank you so much for joining us on the show, man. I'm gonna start you off. First question I'm gonna ask you is. Being a big time baller coming out of Persian, your name was everywhere. Did you ever consider Michigan and with state being such a <laughs> rival? You know, how big is that rivalry for people that don't know about it? Um, yeah, I definitely to answer your first question. Yeah, I definitely considered Michigan. But like at the time at the time that I was coming out, like it was it was night and day. Like it was really easy to decide. But like, I mean, as the years went on. Like, man, I seen some things I kind of liked about the uh, the program in Michigan, but I kind of always felt like I would fit better at state. And, like, the, riv the rivalry thing, like, a lot of people, well, I would say, like, the recruits and other other athletes, they don't understand how, how big how big it is because they're not from the state of Michigan. If you're not from the state of Michigan, you don't understand the, 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 the whole atmosphere, the school being right down the road like it's, it's for for especially inner city guy like myself like it's, it means more to me than probably anybody else you know what i'm saying because had the opportunity to to play here in michigan you know like inner city visiting michigan could have went to michigan and chose so it's for probably it, it means a lot and every time we we went against uh the wolverines like my goal was to you know i'm trying to demolish them in any way we can but it was fun though man looking back on it and um you know both universities are doing great right now They're doing a lot of great things so keith, keith i'm gonna take it back i know the question it is i know the answer to this but i want you to explain it to our viewers why persia and also tell everyone how influential and and how they love the important part of your life you said why persian yeah, why Persian? Shit, yeah, I mean, all you, it really, like, Persian is like the staple, bro, like, on the east, east in the city, like, he's one of the, who wouldn't want to go to Persian, bro, like, I mean, it takes a lot to be a dough boy, and a lot of people don't know what comes with that, but for me, like, it wasn't, I, I really didn't, I honestly really didn't even consider no other high schools, you know, I'm from the east side, like, school right there, smack in the middle of the hood, no, that's family anyway. And I grew up playing for Reach. Reach basically is Persian for real. Persian is Reach, however you want to put it. And then A Dub, you know, like, <clears throat> you know, that's a special dude. A lot of people don't understand him. A lot of people probably would never understand him. But that's a special guy. Like, I was lucky, me personally, I was lucky to have him, you know, come into my life at the time that he did. Because if he didn't, I don't know where I would have been, bro. Like. As a, not only as a basketball coach, but like as a father figure, a mentor, uh, a, a, a teacher, a tutor, <laughs> a track coach, <laughs> driven conditioning. <laughs> For real. Like, so I feel like just by me going to Persian, it was like, I feel like that was, it was all in God's plan, man, because the people that I met being around the, the school and the program, like they, every, everything was always genuine. It was always love don't know you were mcdonald's high school all american playing in that game how close did you get to some of the other players and did somebody try to convince you to go someplace else no they uh nobody re never really tried to convince me to to go anywhere else because i wasn't really the most you know like sociable and approachable guy but like my my mind what's my mind is made up like i pretty much locked in i don't really i don't like back out of decisions I already made. Well, since we on the McDonald's on American Keith, I always wanted to know, do they give you free McDonald's for the rest of your life when you go to those hey, you know what's you know what's crazy though about that? You know, remember uh uh Mark Webster? Yeah. Man, he told me, bro, like I, I had to be like seventh, eighth grade. 
he told me like, cause I used to love McDonald's back in the day. Like every, every trip we went on, we need to go to McDonald's. So he told me this how he tricked me, but it ended up working in my favor though. He told me like, yeah, like uh, you know, if you a McDonald's on American, you get free McDonald's for the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> now me. You know, I'm a kid. I'm like, what? You serious? I ain't, I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna pay for the Mickey D's. <laughs> oh, it's lit. <laughs> Say it's all. You gotta be a big dog. It's all. Now look, bro. I done, now fast forward. Now I'm at the McDonald's game, bro. Like now, this still in my mind. Like four, five years later, bro. This still in my mind. I'm like, so I'm, we they this how they played it though. We we had went to like the Ronald McDonald house to visit with some kids and stuff you know, did what we supposed to do. And then they took us to the actual McDonald's. So so they let us go in there, like everybody, like they like, go ahead, get what y'all want, eat as much as y'all want. Y'all can make y'all food, make y'all make flurries, all that. It was our, it was our, it was our store for the day, basically, pretty much, it was us. So I'm sitting down eating, right? I'm eating my, uh, my double cheeseburger, got mac sauce on the fries, no pig. I remember like it yesterday. I, uh, I, uh, so so Bob Bob Gibbons and his wife was sitting right next to me, bro. So I asked, I'm like, look, uh, yeah, I, I know we're doing this for today, but after today, do we get free McDonald's for the rest of our life for uh for being McDonald's All American? Man, he looked at me and started laughing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm like, so what that mean? He's like, no, man, I'm just for the day. <laughs> <laughs> I always hey, wanted to know that. <laughs> man, no, bro, they don't give a free make. I thought they did though. It would have been clutch for sure. <laughs> so so let me ask you, was it at that point into McDonald's High School All American game, or when did you know that you could compete on that NBA level? When did you know you, you had special skills? Um I knew I knew early, honestly, because I uh I always, I always like play up, up a grade or two, like on the AU circuit and stuff. So I felt like if I'm two years, a year younger than these guys, and I'm competing at a high level against them, I feel I always feel like I could, you know, do something special with the game of basketball. And then like a lot of like highly touted guys, like I started seeing them at, at, at like camps and stuff, and like like individual camps. You know, I always held my own. So I like these are the top guys in my class. Like, I know I got a shot. So my next question for you, Keith. I never asked you this, but how was playing for Izzo, man? Because you know you hear so many rumors, you hear so many stories. <laughs> so I feel like I should ask you first. Why not ask you? How was it playing for Izzo? Um, all right, let me ask you this though. What 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 rumors? What rumors do you hear? Well, just like, you know, like when you was up there, how he wasn't, you know, using you right. You know, how just all the madness that you hear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Honestly, bro. I mean, you know, he is a great coach. Great coach. I mean, his his uh, accolades speak for themselves. I mean, you know, it was great, great university. Learned a lot. But, like, people, that's a question that, that people – Ask me often while I was up there, and you know, like even as a player, bro. Even when when things not not going the right way, you never want to be that guy to blame it on the coach. You see what I'm saying? Like yeah, ever. Yeah. That's to me. That's like the the lamest excuse ever, bro. Like, <laughs> but like, what I can say though is like, I I learned a lot. Like as far as like like the mental aspect of the game and like approaching the game but like as far as like like hooping and and just like going out there and using my god gifted abilities that that's kind of like a a story for another you know what i'm saying like a, a, a topic for another story but as far as like just going up there growing learning and and becoming a a, a better a better leader a better communicator a better I, kudos he is man he he helped me become all of that but like it is it is some things that I feel like could have could have been a little uh, could have could have been done a little different while I was there you know what I'm saying but at the same time I feel like everything happened for a reason 
And and what I while I was up there for four years, I learned a lot and it helped me like in my professional career. And then also tell us how I, like even when you graduated, man, because I like talked to Derek, I talked to some other Spartans, man, just how he is after you graduate. He's still the, he's still a good guy. Oh no, after he graduated, he he's ten times better than he is as like as a coach. He's better as a friend than as a coach. <laughs> because like it's it's a whole nother like it's a it's a different it's it's it's, it's, it's a different relationship. You know, it's 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 not it's not coach it's not coach to player no more or like like coach to you know what I'm saying? It's 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 man to man. Like right. I survived the four years, you feel me, did everything that I could do for the program, um, got my degree, did everything that that was asked to me. So now it's just like it's it's a whole nother it's a it's a different type of appreciation that 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 we kinda have for each other or Every, you know what I'm saying? Like it's it is different from playing from him from 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 playing for him than it is like communicating when 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 it's all said and done. That's a good segue into my next question because I wanted to ask you what coach do you feel like gave you the most knowledge and touched your life the most? Um uh, when you say knowledge, what you mean? Like knowledge of the game or just a life? Or just period? life, life life lessons. Um, man, life lessons. I feel like AW for sure because, like, coming up from the east side of Detroit, going going places where I where I where I was able to go, I would I would have never been prepared or ready for that. Like, if he hadn't came into my life, you know what I'm saying? It's, it was almost like. Without, without, without Canada, I would probably wouldn't even went to MSU, honestly. But is, but is had had a, a huge impact as well. It was more so like, from I feel like Canada helped groom me from being a a boy to a young man, and is helped groom me from a young man to a man that's going into the real world. You see what I'm saying? It was really like he 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 taught me a lot more about like life and and decisions and you know what I'm saying consequences that come with decisions as well as you know like the basketball stuff like reading defenses and oh man I, <coughs> like those two people I feel like has has probably had like the biggest, and I, I done played for a lot of coaches, man, like a lot, a lot of coaches. And I feel like those two have had the, have probably had the biggest impact on my life out of all the coaches I ever played for. You got to throw Mark Webster in there too. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Absolutely. Got to, you got to, because it, because without him, you don't, you don't make it out the hood. He, <laughs> man, you ain't connect, you don't, you don't get to the next level without, without Mark. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly, got to throw him in there for sure. My next question for you, Keep. So, um, adversity when you was in college, right? Being yeah. on, being at the top of your game, and I remember watching when y'all was playing Kentucky, and then you remember when you hurt your hand. Yeah. And then you were supposed to sit out, but you didn't sit out and kept continuously playing. Yeah. And then you know, the round of draft, you didn't get drafted, but you worked your way up. Yeah. Let our viewers know about the hard work, the dedication, and the sacrifices you had to make to be able to make it to the NBA? All right, so, like, and it's crazy, because I was just talking to uh, to Dane Fife a few weeks ago about this. I had, um like, mid-season, I remember we was, we was coming, I think we was coming back from, like, like Penn State or, or, or Indiana or one of them, like, my senior year, and we was off, we was getting off the bus, it's probably, like, 2 in the morning. He just had pulled me to the side, like, yeah. <laughs> he told me, like, I think it was mid-season, the mid-season pose that came up, something like that, the player pose. And I was, like, uh, like first team All-American, like, um, mid-season, Big Ten player of the year, like, all everything, all, all everything. Now, mind you, I'm healthy, I'm 100%, I'm, you know, everything going good. So, I, yeah, he, 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 said, he said to me, like, I don't know what this means to you, but no player in our program has ever had all these um, – what was the word you used? That has been 
Yeah, oh, no, uh, he ha has been um heralded uh, um uh, uh, um <clears throat> in in every single award on, on every single award, and I told him like it's, it, I said to him like it's I mean it's great I appreciate it but like it's still we still got a whole a whole another part of the season left you see what I'm saying, and then so fast forward a little bit we um the Carolina game I had uh I think we was it was neck and neck and then I had um went to go block a shot man landed on my hand tried to brace my fall and I ended up chipping a bone in my in my wrist now at the time it's so much adrenaline and it's a big game all the alumni there couldn't just not come back in the game man like couldn't bro like just just how I am. I, it's too much. It's come on, bro. It's Carolina. They ain't never came to the bridge. I'm not about to sit in the locker room. So I came back. I mean, it probably wasn't a good idea, but I just had to do it, bro. That was it. Was Carolina at the crib, bro? That don't happen. They don't ever go to come to the bridge. But I had um end up hurting my my hip, my hip bone, my uh, my shoulder. My I chipped the bone in my my wrist. And then, um, like they had wanted, they had wanted me to sit out. <coughs> they had wanted me to sit out for like, like, like two to three weeks. But how our schedule was, it was so hectic that like if, if I was to sit out for the full for the full time, it, it kind of would have been like, tough on our season. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So I took that upon myself to, like, man, I, I know team need me man we got a, a chance to do something special so I, I decided to to come back but we had I had they tried I, we tried to steal some time I think I had missed like three three big ten three big ten games and we lost all three of them <clears throat> so then I was like man all right I'm just gonna see how I go see how I feel when I'm out there and shit, it just it, it wasn't the same, bro. It wasn't it it was it was never like I never had that same feel. <clears throat> so I didn't feel like the same person. So then we um so fast forward towards the end of the season, like I'm just pretty much just out here to help keep guys going. You know what I'm saying? Just, we still got a chance. We got a great group of guys, we still got a chance to win a national championship. So I'm just here keep guys going. We ended up falling short, but but I feel like we, we fought a good fight. Like, we definitely fought a good fight. I damn sure did as much as I could. I was like 64%, man. I'm, but I, I kind of felt like, again, everything happened for a reason. So then the, um, the draft, the 2014 draft come about. So now I'm 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 working. I'm rehabbing my body. I'm getting back to myself. So the draft come down. I don't get drafted. Just keep grinding. I keep grinding. I keep grinding. Now I, I um I get a uh a, a training camp deal with the Lakers. Grinding, grinding. Everything going good. Now my my wrist feeling better. My body feeling better. I'm feeling strong. In the training camp, man. I done. Tore my uh my labrum, tore tore the labrum on my shoulder, and my um my shoulder has sublux at the end of training camp. Now at this point I'm just like, oh man, what's 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 next? And then so I uh, but at that point though I was kind of feeling I was feeling better, bro. Like it's like physically and mentally, because that was that was. I think the year before Kobe retired, man, and, and he was kind of keeping me going a little bit for real. And then I, after that, I I had uh, they had sent me down from from um, from LA. They sent me down to to the um, man, what is what is their affiliate name? The, the um, LA Defenders. The Defenders. They sent me down to the Defenders. Bam. And then uh, things didn't go right. We had a Michigan head coach. Things just wasn't going right at all, so they ended up trading me to the uh, <laughs> to the um, to the Magic uh, affiliate. So I get there, 
killing. Everything going great. I'm, my body back to, I'm probably at like 80, 85, 90 percent. I'm feeling good. So fast forward, um, summertime. Now I'm I'm with Orlando Summer League team, and uh, doing my thing. We we winning. Still need it. Doing my thing. I ended up getting the uh, a camp deal with Orlando, and then um, got invited to camp. Did my thing, you know. They end up sending me back to the affiliate, so I go back to the affiliate. The Orlando Magic's affiliate, D-League affiliate team at the time. Doing my thing. Steady grinding, steady pushing, steady pushing. They ended up calling me back up for, for two 10 days. And did my thing, did my thing. And shit, it just, you know, that, that just, how that story went. So at, at the end of the day, what did you learn from all that? At What I learned from, from, all of that was that <laughs> in life, sometimes things might not go the way that, 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 that you got them scripted in your mind, but that's where that perseverance has to, has to play a, a huge role where you got to stay committed to, to your craft and, and just continue to work and believe in yourself because it was multiple times I could have just quit like, man, forget it, bro. My body falling apart out, but my, I had dreams when I was, my dreams was to was to play in the NBA, and I wasn't gonna stop until I got there. How how are you feeling now? How's your body now? Oh, my body is great, man. Like I, <laughs> I'm feeling strong. Like everything is how it should be. Like I'm, I'm feeling great. I'm just can't wait to get back out there on the court, wherever that is at this weight. And as as, as old as I am. To this day, I can still remember one play that wakes me up at night and torments me. What's your one play that if you could go back and do it different, you would make that play all over again? What you mean? <laughs> like your one, one play that haunts you at night. I had a turnover in a crucial game that just, in a conference game that just, it, it's, it gives me nightmares. Is there one play that you wish you could go back and have a redo? Truth be told, but like the one, uh, I'm, I'm the Michigan, the Michigan game. I was about to say that. I knew that one for sure. For, for sure, for sure, the Michigan game. Uh, what else? I can't explain that to them because people might not know it unless you want me to explain it because I remember it like it was yesterday. Pull from the hip for fifth, I'm the shooter. Dog, God, do you? But the two don't discriminate because I shoot the guy I next to you. I heard that podcast.